I don't know what you Lutherans drink, but I have another shot. <laughs> um, I was always told before I before I converted, I was told uh, I heard a story that wherever you find four Lutherans, you'll always find a fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Pistols, Prayer, and Potluck. This is Armed Lutheran Radio. Hey folks, welcome to Armed Lutheran Radio, a show about guns, hunting, competitive shooting, the natural right of self-defense, and what God's Word says about the issues surrounding gun rights and gun ownership. I'm your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, and this is episode number 339. Thank you so much for making Armed Lutheran Radio a part of your week again this week. Uh, Today we bring you our seventh annual Christmas wish list episode. It's hard to believe we've been doing this for seven years already. We're about to wrap up our seventh year. Um, at the um, really at the end of January will be our the end of our seven will be seven full years. But anyhow, that's just a technicality. Christmas shopping season is kicking off. Inflation is on the rise, and it's it's not at record highs anymore, but it's close. Um, thought we'd uh, bring you some Christmas gift ideas for the gun enthusiasts in your life so you can shop now rather than waiting until the last minute. But first, I want to give a shout out to the men and women who make this show possible, the members of the Reformation Gun Club. And this week, I want to shout out to Vincent from Tulare, California, John from Spokane, Washington, Tony from Little Elm, Texas, Eric from Buckeye, Ohio, Frank from Lake City, Michigan, Catherine from Casper, Wyoming, Melvin from Holt, Missouri, Guillaume from Osage Beach, Missouri, Donnie from White Bear Lake, Minnesota, and Stephen from New Bern, North Carolina. Thank you all so much for your support, and thank you to all of the members of the Reformation Gun Club. Uh, Armed Lutheran Radio is listener-funded, and that means that we don't have any advertising, we don't have any sponsors, We rely on the generosity, the support of these good men and women who um, put their money where their mouth is and and, uh, they value what we do and they want to see it continue. And um, they get hundreds of hours of exclusive content. They get some cool Armed Lutheran swag, invitations to our online hangouts, and you can join them. You can take part in this great great group of people. You can join them and... um, Share in the knowledge, the the warmth, and the wonderful feeling of of making Armed Lutheran Radio possible. You can also get access to all that cool stuff as well. And come hang out with us at our monthly online hangouts, the next of which is going to be the last week of November. So it'll be next week, not this coming week. Um, the plan originally was, I think I penciled it in for Wednesday, November 30th. I believe that is the first Wednesday in Advent, which is not a great time for the Pistol Pack and Padre and many of our members. Uh, so I think we're going to change that. So look for an announcement on the Facebook group. And, uh, for those of you who are members of the gun club, I'll be sending out, uh, information and invitations this week. So, Come join us. We would love to see you there. You can find out all the details, all the benefits, all the membership levels at armedlutheran.us slash gun club. Okay, as I mentioned, this is our seventh annual Christmas wish list episode, and we've got um, gift ideas from uh, and wish list ideas from the entire cast. Um, Each year what we do is we get together and we share some gift ideas or some ideas for things that we would like to see under the the tree just to help you come up with some ideas of your own. And as always, I'm going to kick things off with some of my own ideas. I'm going to start with um, ideas for those, if you're buying for someone who loves to read like I do, let me recommend some of my favorite Lutheran authors. And I'm going to start with a shameless plug or two. Um, 
I have released my first work of fiction this year. So if you have a friend or family member who's into, who is a fan of horror, I have just the thing for you. It's called The Executioner's Tale, a gothic horror. It's set in 16th century Germany, just in the years after the Second Small Caldic War. It is available on Amazon and, um, or at armedlutheran.us slash books. I will include links to everything that's recommended today in the show notes as well. Um, we also, the big thing is the new book, the second edition of Duty to Defend, will be out in time for Christmas gift giving. Uh, sometime within the next two weeks, we'll be have that available on Amazon in paperback and for Kindle. You can pre-order that today for a reduced price. <clears throat> and that's at armedlutheran.us slash duty, D-U-T-Y. Um, lots of great content in that book. I am so honored to have uh, gotten um, contributions from 20 pastors from around the country who um, who have, I think I counted it up, like 360 or 380 years combined of preaching and teaching God's Word. And they have taken different verses that are uh, from the Bible that are uh, commonly misused in the gun rights debate, and they have put those those uh, verses in context and explained why or why they are not being used properly. It's an excellent book. I am really, if I do say so myself, uh, <laughs> and I'm really excited to release the second edition. You can pre-order that um, at armedlutheran.us slash D-U-T-Y. I'm also working on an audio book as well. I've had many recommendations or requests for that. That's been slow going, but it's getting there. It's honestly not as big a priority because Audible keeps 60% of the profit from your audiobook sales. So basically you put in all the work, they keep all the money. So I'm trying to find a way to distribute that at a rate that is not akin to highway robbery. Um, but with any luck, I'll have that done in time for Christmas. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. So you can find all of the Armed Lutheran books at armedlutheran.us slash books, or look for a link in the show notes for this episode. Continuing with um, my favorite Lutheran authors, I would rec highly recommend the Reverend Richard Boland's book, Capital Treason, if, you, or if you're buying from, for someone who likes political thrillers, that's an excellent choice. Uh, of course, there's the Reverend Brian Wolfmuller's uh, books, the most recent being um, And Take They Our Life, which explores Martin Luther's theology of martyrdom. Um, and also, uh, my favorite, I think, of, of Wolfmuller's books would be Has American Christianity Failed? Um, I will include links for those in the show notes as well. This is not really a gift idea, but it's something that I, I want to recommend for you, for your family, for Advent. The Reverend Joshua Shear, who is a fan of the show, um, has another excellent collection of Advent devotions available in paperback or for Kindle. And uh, I'll have a link for that in the show notes. I believe that is called Come and See. Yes, it is called Come and See, Devotions for Advent. So I recommend that highly. I've I've purchased his uh, previous um, both Advent and Lenten devotions, uh, which I've enjoyed greatly. So I would recommend that for you. And back to, back to the gift ideas, if you like action and spy thrillers, check out Ray Keating's Pastor Stephen Grant novels. Uh, his newest is called Persecution, which is the 16th in the series, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if you've never read the books, or if you're buying for someone who's never read the books, grab a copy of the very first one. It's called Warrior Monk. The main character in this series is Pastor Stephen Grant. He is a former CIA assassin who now serves, oddly enough, as a Lutheran pastor. And his old life and his new life intersect in really interesting and exciting ways. So be sure to check those out. Those are the Pastor Stephen Grant novels from Ray Keating. Again, I will have links in the show notes. Uh, he's also released his first of a new series called The Alliance of St. Michael. Um, 
And the first book in that series is called Cathedral, and it is about a, a group of men and women who come together to work covertly against um, fascism and communism at the dawn of the 1930s, the, the two most significant threats to Christianity and civilization. And uh, like I say, that first book is called Cathedral. I'm looking forward to to reading that. That is on, in my pile of things to read. I'm looking at a pile of books over on the other side of the room now, and I can see it's right there. I need to, I need to get down to it. But everything of um, Raymond Keating's books have been fantastic, so be sure to check them out. Uh, on to shooting stuff. I'm going to take sort of the same approach that Sergeant Bill did in his um, ballistic minute this week, I have not been shooting a while in a, in in a long while, um, two years since I pulled the trigger um, on a gun and actually fired a live round. I've done some dry fire, but I haven't actually been to the range. I have not been to a match in a long time. Maybe you have friends or family who have never been shooting or who like me stopped, curtailed their shooting during COVID and just never got back to it. So I'm going to suggest a couple of things. One, um, dry fire books, uh, like the ones from Steve Anderson or Ben Stoger. Um, I've never, I've, I've done a little bit of Stoger stuff. I really like Steve Anderson's books. Um, Ammo, if you can find it reasonably and expensively, it is starting to, to become more, available. The prices are still a little high compared to where they were. Um, but there, there is more availability now. Um, most importantly, I would say, take, take them to the range, give the gift of your time and help those people get back in the swing of things. Or if they're new to guns, get them out to the range for the first time and teach them the basics. And With that suggestion, let me sort of piggyback slightly off of what Mia talks about in her upcoming segment by suggesting that the greatest gift that you can give is your time. Make sure that you take time for family and friends, and most importantly, for worship in God's house where the word is rightly preached and the sacraments are rightly administered. Spend time with those you love. Take them to church. Go with them to church. Take them to the range. Find the time. Make the time, because as the good book says, we know not the day nor the hour. And with that, I'm going to turn this show over to my awesome cast, Mia Anstein, Sergeant Bill Sylvia, and Pastor John Bennett. I hope you all have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Christ's blessings to all of you. We will be off next week taking a little vacation, so I will see you at the online hangout the week after that. Again, look for a, uh, an announcement, an event announcement on the Facebook page, on the Facebook group. And for those of you who are uh, members of the Reformation Gun Club or those who are on the, um, the mailing list, you will get an announcement in the, in the mail as well. Until then, keep shooting, keep praying. We'll talk to you next time. Time now for Mia's Motivations with Mia Anstein. Hey, hi, hello, and happy to be visiting with you again. And this is yet another Christmas gift guide episode from the cast of Arm Lutheran Radio. I can't believe that we've done so many and that time is just zooming by. And here we are again preparing to go shop for Christmas gifts and so forth. And I've been putting some thought into it because every year we talk about rifle primers. That's something that's huge on a lot of my family and friends gift giving lists. But we'll talk about that scopes, holsters. There is such a lengthy list of items that I have shared over the years and that the other cast members have shared as well. And this year I do have some items that I'll share with you again, but before I get started, I really wanted to tell you that I received an email from one of the local pastors. I live in an area where it's an hour drive to every church, so I have hopped from church to church depending on what I need to do, what the weather's doing, where I need to go. 
where I can get my family to attend and so forth. And because I mentioned my family, I think the very best gift that you can give anyone for Christmas this year is to invite them to the Christmas services. All of the services, not just Christmas Eve, not just Christmas Day, but all of the services. Something that is hugely lacking in our nation and probably in the world. I don't know. I haven't traveled much since the pandemic hit years ago. It seems like yesterday. But I haven't traveled a whole lot. But something that is missing is community. And the church is a place where you can find community. We need to spend time with not just our family, but our friends. And we need to share with one another and share the goodness of what God has given us. So I hope that that will be the A number one thing that is on your gift list. Now on to a couple items. I have really been not into spending a whole bunch of money because it seems like we have become so focused on things. And I know in my house, I have so many things I moved about a year and a half ago and of course downsized and got rid of a lot of things but we still have a lot of things so while we're looking at all of this maybe we need to find things that we need or things that can help make our friends and family healthy or make them safe or make them make their lives better so one of the things i wanted to share is a personal defense item i have a few here but um I have gotten these during my travels and I got them because there are certain places like when I went to DC in September, there are certain places where you're not allowed to carry a firearm. And there's also certain places where you're not allowed to carry these items, but you will need to check ahead of time. One of them is a tactical pen. And that's something that I take nearly everywhere with me, tactical pens, knives, stuff like that. And while we don't want people to get within that range where we're at the point where we have to do hand-to-hand combat, it's something that maybe you want to send your loved ones to a training class where they can learn hand-to-hand, make them more aware. You can give them the book called The Gift of Fear, where maybe they won't even have to be in a situation. That's a wonderful book that I suggest to everybody. But that'd be a great gift. Another thing I found, it's a rechargeable flashlight and it's a high energy flashlight. And what that means is it's basically a flashlight with a taser on the end. It's called a security pen and it's a little thicker than a pen. Maybe it's more like a slim marker, but that's something that you can easily fit in your purse, in your pocket. Uh, It's simple to carry. And also you need a flashlight for safety. A flashlight can also be a great deterrent. If you see somebody eyeing you, if you flash your light at them, immediately you're like, hey, I got you, I see you. And it lets them know that you're not an easy target. So something like that is a great thing. Um, Sabre has some great flashlights that have you know, excellent lumens, they're waterproof and that work really well. Another thing that I have is a guard dog security hornet and it's they call it the world's smallest stun gun keychain and it also has like a little mini flashlight. The lumens are not great on that, but it looks like a key fob and so it can easily fit on a keychain and you can carry that for self-defense. I actually gave that to a friend of mine who was walking by herself from a hotel and wouldn't let anybody walk with her and so since she wouldn't let me walk with her i gave her my key fob uh, stun gun and she said she couldn't believe how much confidence and how much more safe she felt just having that little device and while we don't want to be that close it is just something that is handy and some of these i've tried uh, on my cattle and stuff like that and yes they do work they're not going to stop a threat but they may deter a threat So those are some things you might think about. Another thing that I wanted to mention is it's a tracking device. And that may sound kind of, I know some people are very anti-tracking. And this one I have, it's called Invisaware, I-N-V-I-S-A-W-E-A-R, Invisaware. And it's a little charm and it fits on a bracelet or a hair tie or a necklace. And looks like a little medallion, has a little weird logo on there that I'm not too fond of. But what I do 
is when I am traveling and I can't take a taser because there are places you cannot take tasers and you can't take tactical pens, but I wear this charm and it's a tracker and I, it has a Bluetooth. It attaches to my phone. You do need to be in an area where you have cell service because it's not going to work if you don't have that. But what I can do is if I were to be abducted in an Uber, or if I were to be kidnapped or something is happening, I can press the charm and activate it and it will send a text message notifying my loved ones, my husband and my daughter. It notifies them and it will give them a pin of where I was when I activated that. So that's something that you may consider as a gift for a loved one, especially if they cannot carry a self-defense item. If you have other ideas, I'd love to hear them. But again, as I said, I really want everybody to focus on community, focus on the Lord and focus on the goodness of the season rather than the gifts. These are just a few. If you would like other gift ideas, go listen to the past Christmas gift episodes from the cast and crew. There are great ideas. And I also have some great gift ideas on my website. I will say that honestly, this year it's been kind of a struggle, but there is a plethora of ideas, but it's been a struggle because I really think that We've been focusing on the wrong things and we need to bring everybody in and embrace the community, whether they believe the same things we believe or not. We need to all learn to love one another again. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and many blessings. You can read more from Mia, watch her YouTube videos, or check out her podcast, Mac Outdoors with Mia and Leah at MiaAnstein.com. Time now for another Ballistic Minute with Sergeant Bill Sylvia. Hey everybody, I'm Sergeant Bill and this is your Ballistic Minute. Today we're going to talk about some Christmas stuff. So, I've been trying to think of things that I would suggest for people to get for Christmas. Problem is, most of the stuff I suggest for shooting stuff, you can't really get. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't really shot more than a handful of rounds in probably the last two to three months. So, with that in mind, my suggestions are going to be dry fire related. So, there's tons of different dry fire books you can get for the shooter in your life. If they are a competition shooter, Ben Steger's got a ton of different books. I've read almost all of them and recommend every single one of them. And there's many other books you can get that can give them some training stuff to do that doesn't cost a whole bunch of ammo and they can do it at home. You can even dry fire in the range if you go to the range and you want to shoot some rounds. Another idea is you could get some dry fire targets. Uh, I bought some before at Ben Steger Pro Shop and they're actually still on the walls and they're reduced size, one third, one quarter, one half. They got a whole bunch of different sizes. They got everything from your IDPA targets, USPSA targets, steel, circle steel, mini poppers, large poppers, all kinds of stuff so that you can practice dry fire and have realistic targets and get used to aiming at your targets where you need to. I hope everyone has a wonderful holidays, a Merry Christmas, and a fantastic new year. I'm Sergeant Bill, and this has been your Ballistic Minute. Sergeant Bill Sylvia is a veteran of the Dallas Police Force and a masterclass competitive shooter. You can check out his YouTube videos at armedlutheran.us slash Sergeant Bill. It's time for Pastoral Pontifications with Pastor John Bennett. Hey folks, this is Pastor John Bennett, the Pistol Packing Padre, and for this year's wish list episode, I'm doing something a little bit different. This episode is set to air right before Thanksgiving, and so I wanted to talk for a little bit about the things that I am thankful for from this past year. Now right there at the top of the list, I have my wife and my children. One of the, uh, the greatest, I would say, reliefs is being able to come home at the end of the day to a loving wife and wonderful children that really help to subdue and relieve the stresses that come with this vocation. I'm thankful for my congregation. And ultimately, I would feel completely wrong, like a complete heretic, 
if I didn't make it clear that I am thankful above all other things for the gift of God's Son, for the salvation that we have through the life, sufferings, death, and resurrection of Christ Jesus. Now on to the wish list portion of this segment. Now I really don't have anything firearm related that I would wish to have for this uh, this coming Christmas at this point, uh, and I never thought I would say this, but I'm rather content with with what I own at this moment. Now of course this may sound a little unrealistic, but I really wish for affordable ammunition prices. That's one of the things that I can certainly put on my wish list. Now, some more unrealistic things from our wish list. Boy, it'd be great to be back to $2 gasoline prices right now. That would just make my day. Now, for any of you who are as upset as I am about the rise in gas prices, thanks to the environmental policies of the current administration, there is an app called the Get Upside. Perhaps if you listen to the various political podcasts, you've heard about this already. But just from this last month, I have banked roughly $30 in cash back from using that app at various participating gas stations and grocery stores. So look into that. I'd really wish to have a reasonable rate of inflation right now. With the rise of inflation exceeding what most people are experiencing with the increase in their wages, it's going to be tough for the near future, which makes the 2024 elections all that much more important. Other things that I'm wishing for? Well, I'm I'm wishing for some quality time with my family. I know I've mentioned this in previous years' wishlist episodes, uh, but to me, more than all of the material things of this world, to be able to have that quality time with family, with friends, with congregation members, that's something that's irreplaceable. Let's face it, material things, they wear out, they break, they get stolen, They don't last, but that time that you have with the people that you care about and the people who care about you, that's something that's priceless and that's more important than anything else in this life aside from our faith and salvation. But I'm also wishing for all of you, our beloved listeners, a very blessed Thanksgiving celebration, a blessed Advent season, and a blessed and upcoming celebration once again of our Lord and Savior's birth. Well, that's all for this segment. Thank you for listening, and God's blessings to you and your family in the upcoming holiday celebrations. John Bennett is the pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in Willow Creek, Minnesota. For more information, visit stjohnswillowcreek.org. For show notes, be sure to visit our website at www.armedlutheran.us. Check out the Facebook page, The Armed Lutheran, or join our Facebook group, Fans of Armed Lutheran Radio. If you like what you hear, please leave us a comment on our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback, or a review on iTunes, and let us know what you think. Thank you for listening to Armed Lutheran Radio, a member of the Self-Defense Radio Network.